Hello and welcome to my room where my philosophy is you can sleep until 2 p.m. but then you have to try and live with yourself. So I'm going to be talking about the project that I'm doing just like everybody else is. And for my project I'm using something that I was already working on. I've been doing magazine cutout art and I've been doing one piece for every day that I'm self-quarantined in my house. So the reason that I got inspired to do this was one, I was just like generally bored. And also because my friend's dad is an artist and he made me this. And it's one of my favorite art pieces that I own. It's also magazine cutout art and he made it from these vintage magazines that he found from like the 60s, I think. And so I was inspired to do something similar, but from recently published magazines. One thing that I really like to do with these pieces is intertwine different times in history. I usually pull photography from National Geographic and Vogue. My mom was collecting National Geographic since like the late 90s, I think. Like she had hundreds of them and she ended up cleaning out a bunch of them, but I got a hold of some of them and that's where I'm like cutting out images from. And then I collected some Vogue magazines and the two styles of photography are like super juxtaposed, which I think is really interesting to like put together in one piece of cutout art. I think it really nicely compares the past and the present and comparing the two, which I think often leads to like resentment about the time that we're living in right now and like how our history is going down. And even maybe like a kind of nostalgia for a time in history that we never actually experienced, but that we kind of wish we were living in now. Vogue and National Geographic also have two really different agendas, I guess you could say, in their photography, which is really interesting also to mix together. Obviously the overwhelming purpose of Vogue is commercialism. Pretty much every single page is ad-based, whereas National Geographic is environmentalism and humanitarianism. I also try to represent the feelings of my generation currently. In general, it feels like our generation is kind of holding this huge burden about the future, about, oh, like, you're the generation of hope and like, you're the ones that are gonna change everything and we're kind of sitting here helpless, like, uh, mm -hmm. and now it's suddenly our responsibility to fix everything and reverse all of the damage that has been done on this planet. I also try to involve a lot about what's happening right now, obviously with the coronavirus. And also because I'm selfish, I make pieces sometimes that don't really have a political statement and just entertain me and make me laugh. So I'm gonna go through the, I think 15 um, pieces that I've made so far for every day that I've been in quarantine and I'll show you each of them and talk about them. So this is day one. I think I called it patience wing and staff only. I found a mask in a National Geographic and the mountains are also from a National Geographic and the patient's wing and staff only I think was actually a photograph of a nurse at a prison. I've been getting really into like replacing people with animals lately. But by adding the mountains in the background, I wanted to kind of make it feel like this virus is more than an infectious disease that just stays within the walls of a building. I wanted to make it feel like the infection of an entire valley. So this is image number two and day two. I think I decided to pull this image from National Geographic of the woman um, gathering the, the tomatoes off the ground because when I made this, I think it was the time where everyone was like panic shopping and like taking all of the toilet paper from every store. And in a really weird sense, even though this image was from like, I think the early 2000s, it feels like it has the same sense of desperation. And I added the chickens at the top because I liked how they weren't in focus. I think it gives the picture a feeling of like panicked movement, which I really like. This third image, uh, I genuinely don't know what to say about it. <laughs> There's no political statement behind this. I just like thought it was cool looking. I think the original human being was a celebrity that I cut out of a Vogue magazine. I don't know who it is, I don't care now, her face is a bee. But then I pulled all of the bee images from National Geographic. This one was like really hard to cut out because of 
the uh, bees, obviously. <laughs> this is day four. This is kind of what I was talking about earlier when I was talking about intertwining different times in history. Obviously all of the products were pulled from commercial based magazines like Vogue. And then the sculpture I think I took from National Geographic. The sculpture focuses on facial beauty and the human form and the products just feel like they're flaunting and showing off trying to get you to buy them. Two very different forms of art. Oh yeah, oh this one's my favorite, yeah. So this is day five. The art of the airplanes and the clouds came from a National Geographic history magazine. I just wanted to show the repetition of history in war zones. This next one, which is day six, I think, I made while I had a really bad migraine and I titled this one No Comment. This one is day seven. I was also really sick when I made this one so I did it really late at night and with not very much motivation so I kind of just threw it together. I titled this one Skin Deep. I just really liked the blandness of the skulls and the color on the man's face and skin and then I put a little pile of trash on top of his head. This is day eight. This is actually one of my favorites. I titled this one Four Eyes. The model underneath is from Vogue. I don't remember her name. It's like Taylor or something. I also try to cover up brand names as much as I can in these cutouts because when the brands are left in the pieces, it kind of makes it feel like a commercial, which I... And then the doctor's eyes I left in intentionally because they look really panicked. The kid standing on the back kind of reminds me of How to Train Your Dragon, except it's like more creepy and realistic. This next one, I was kind of thinking about wealth distribution when I made this one. I found the photos of the celebrities from People Magazine and Vogue. This one is more aesthetic, uh, it doesn't really have an agenda. My room is covered in pink things because pink is my favorite color so I was guess I was just trying to like match the aesthetic in my room. The dress and the feet are from two separate models in Vogue so they don't really match up properly so I kind of placed them wrong and the legs look like weird and deformed which I kind of like. This one is day 12. I covered the big Newport cigarette label in the front with Cara Delevingne's eyes and then I stuck a little giraffe head in the cigarette to make it look like a tube that it was sticking its head out of. I guess I just wanted this one to feel a little bit mystical and weird. Now this one, I left the title of the product and the brand on on purpose because I think it kind of makes it funnier. If it were just a perfume bottle with dead fish in it, it would be like gross and, but the fact that it's named Wanderlust, I don't know why, but it just makes it like, infinitely more funny to me. You can tell this is where I'm like starting to lose my sanity in the process of this project. This one is also one of my favorites that I made and I was like okay I want to humanize Corona so I thought about putting it on the skateboard like the skateboarding but then it didn't quite look right and I was like it doesn't really like it doesn't have any like limbs or anything so that doesn't make any sense so I decided to leave the arm with the skateboard and then put it on the side of the corona. Even though it's literally an inanimate object it kind of feels like it has attitude somehow. I thought about putting a doctor's mask on the neck of the bottle of the corona but I thought that was a little on the nose so I left it off. And this is day 15 of the self-quarantine project. It's the latest one that I've done. I was kind of thinking of my mom when I made this because she's going back to work tomorrow and she works in the ER and apparently they're gonna have such a surge of coronavirus patients that they're gonna be completely overfilled with patients and they're still trying to figure out like what to do and how the doctors are gonna be able to deal with that. Okay, so now that I'm done showing you what I have already, I thought that I would show you how I make one and make a new one for you because I still need to do today's cutout, so. Oh my gosh, I only have like a minute left. Okay, so I found this really cool cityscape that's reflective and colorful. So I thought I'd use that as a background. Oh, I was like really excited about it, I guess. And um, this painting of Queen Elizabeth and this model that was getting her hair cut in Vogue. So I decided to replace Queen Elizabeth with the model that was getting her hair cut out and then put it on the cityscape as the background. So it was a really intricate process to cut this one out, but uh, it worked out pretty well. Um, I cut her out of the magazine and then I glued it onto the page. It, the hardest part is positioning everything together, but then I just use Elmer's glue and this was the final product. It's really chaotic and weird. Uh, but I kind of like it that way. That's how I'm feeling. So 
if you watch this, thank you so much for watching. And I can't wait to see your guys's as well. So yay.